Witchblade is a powerful sentient weapon that only chooses females as its hosts, but a male character has also wielded it for some time. It is one of the 13 artifacts that hold the power to destroy this universe. So naturally, a lot of evildoers have their eyes set on these artifacts to gain their immense strength for their malevolent deeds. And these villains use unthinkable means to acquire them. In this video, we will discuss each of these villains who are involved with the Witchblade and other artifacts. So get ready for some interesting stories. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Kenneth Irons the main antagonist of the Witchblade series, Kenneth Irons, is a knight from ancient times who gained eternal life after drinking from the Holy Grail. He had unearthed the Witchblade in Greece when it was lost, but it cost him his hand. Kenneth Irons is a ruthless man and currently one of the richest men in the world as the entrepreneur of Irons International, but he is also involved in some shady business. Kenneth's obsession with the Witchblade began in the 19th century when he discovered the Witchblade in an archaeological dig. He is obsessed with attaining the Witchblade and willing to take any level of action for it. He even made his right-hand man and bodyguard, Ian, undergo a torturing ritual to siphon the power of the Witchblade for himself. But the Witchblade was currently bound to the NYPD detective named Sarah Pazzini. Sarah had accepted her role as the wielder, and later, a fight broke out between her and Kenneth. Sarah then revealed that Kenneth can never wield the Witchblade because the Witchblade only chooses women as its wielder. Ian Nottingham the bodyguard and the right-hand man of Kenneth Irons, Ian Nottingham, is a British assassin of American Indian descent, and he is also the only man who has successfully worn the Witchblade. Ian Nottingham is one of the most dangerous assassins who had been undercover for the Russian Mafia when he made contact with Kenneth Irons. He later met Sarah Pazzini, the wielder of the Witchblade, and fell in love with her. Ian possesses a number of mystical powers, and the odd marking on his right hand allows him to bond with the Witchblade and the Darkness powers. Ian's DNA was fused with an undisclosed element under the secret Project Odin, which gave him this bonding ability. The Witchblade is a sentient power and had preferred Ian over Sarah for some time, but he eventually lost the Witchblade to Sarah Pizzini in a battle and also had to face her rejection. Aphrodite IV Aphrodite IV is a cyborg and a distant predecessor of the Aphrodite IX, a self-aware android designed by Cyberdata. As her name suggests, she is the fourth cyborg in this series of human-like android assassins. She is a skilled weapon master who never misses a target, and she also has superhuman strength and stamina. In one of her missions, she was sent to help Ian Nottingham in his prison break. Later, in another mission, she snuck into the Cyberforce, the base of cybernetic heroes, and lied to them about needing the help of Cyberforce to save the world. Aphrodite IV soon met Sarah Pazzini there, and they both began a fight. During the battle, Aphrodite IV revealed her true intentions of stealing the Witchblade right before being gunned down by a Cyberforce member named Ballistic. She was afterward destroyed by Sarah Pazzini. Celestine Wright A girl with a photographic memory raised to be ruthless, Celestine Wright is Sarah Pazzini's enemy who has murdered over 40 people and has been in a mental hospital, but she broke out of it in a couple of years. Sarah was investigating her murders when Celestine first met Sarah and saw the Witchblade. Although Celestine escaped from her first meeting with Sarah, she later returned to claim the Witchblade because Celestine felt that the Witchblade wanted her. Celestine Wright attacked Sarah's precinct, and Sarah detonated the bomb strapped on Celestine, but Celestine managed to survive the blast and escaped. She later attacked the precinct a second time, but this time she was arrested and sent to jail. Celestine was eventually decapitated during the later events and died. The Demon The Demon is an unnamed entity that is as infinite and terrible as the darkness. The Demon has described itself as a wave of the black tide that rises again and again and that will engulf the world. 
The demon had been roaming for an unspecified time period and recently possessed a lone mother named Perdita Duncan and then killed her daughter, but the authorities soon arrested Perdita and sent her to prison. Alex Underwood was investigating the case and Alex also currently wielded the Witchblade. When Alex paid a visit to Perdita in the prison, Perdita informed Alex about the demon that possessed her. So Alex used the Witchblade to find her hex mark and help Perdita. But the demon eventually made Perdita escape the prison and then it possessed Alex. Alex confronted the demon in her consciousness and fought it. The demon revealed that it was scared of the Witchblade, so Alex used the Witchblade to set the demon on fire. The Darkness the Darkness is a primal force in the universe and the dark counterpart of his light-based opponent called the Angelus. The Witchblade is an offspring of these two powers. The Darkness is a male entity that represents chaos and he is the foe of the Angelus. The Darkness takes male hosts and passes himself on to their offspring after killing his first host. The hosts whom the Darkness kills end up in the Shadow Realm or Hell ruled by the Darkness. The Darkness has been using hosts for over a span of 10,000 years, but Jackie Estacado is considered the most powerful among them. He will be discussed in a later part of this video. Toranoshi The literal translation of his name is Tiger of Death. Toranoshi is the former bodyguard of Kenneth Irons. He used to work as an assassin in Hong Kong and struggled with his freelance work of committing crimes until he reached New York City and began working for the Yakuza. He became an assassin of the top level and honed his skills in the use of all forms of weapons. He was even willing to take the life of the innocent to complete his tasks. Toranoshi was sent to tackle Jackie Estacado, but the latter killed him with the power of the darkness. However, Sonatine revived Toranoshi so that the Yakuza could extract their revenge on the Mafia. Kenneth Irons sent his bodyguard, Ian Nottingham, to subdue the war between the Mafia and the Yakuza, and then a battle ensued between him and Toranoshi. Toranoshi suffered defeat at the hands of Ian Nottingham, and then Kenneth Irons took in Toranoshi as his male servant and personal bodyguard. But Toranoshi was eventually killed by Ian. Tauma Tauma is a centuries-old being who has survived the destruction of his universe and lives in the current universe. He is the brother of the Curator, who shall be discussed next, so keep watching. Tauma knows a great deal about the 13 artifacts, and he is also interested in pitching the two wielders of the Witchblade against each other. This interest made him the main villain during the War of the Witchblades. Tauma manipulated Sarah Pizzini during this war, and she went out to dispose of Danielle, who possessed the power of the Angelus. When Danielle was killed, the Angelus found a new host named Finch and used this host to revive Danielle and then possess her again. The Angelus also healed Sarah Pizzini of her darkness, and then Sarah also turned against Tauma. A fight ensued, but this fight did not last very long because Tauma managed to escape the scene as soon as he had the chance to do so. Tauma was seen happy when Danielle died, but his true intentions were not clearly explained during these events. The Curator Survivor The Curator is a major antagonist of the Witchblade story. He also goes by the alias of the Survivor, but his real name remains a mystery. He is the survivor of another universe that was destroyed when the 13 artifacts were brought together. He can be traced back to feudal China, and he currently runs an antique shop, but his true intentions are far beyond running a shop. His true motive is to bring the 13 artifacts together once again so that he can destroy this world and start it anew. The Curator was the one who had sent Aphrodite IV on a mission to the Cyber Force. The Curator has also recruited characters like Ian Nottingham and Sabina to his cause. He has also been exposing the locations of the 13 artifacts to different individuals. The curator once sent his recruitees to make the wielder of the 13th artifact join him, but they failed in this mission. And then later, a battle ensued which gave them the opportunity to capture Magdalene, Michael Finnegan, and Abigail. The curator later revealed to Abigail that he is the genetic codex of his universe and that Hope Pizzini, the daughter of Sarah Pizzini, is the genetic codex of the current world. His actual intentions were revealed as he exposed his plan to use Hope Pizzini to rebuild his own world after he had destroyed the current one. Pyromancer 
The real name of Pyromancer is Ray Perkins, and he first appeared in the 40th issue of Witchblade. He is an arsonist who gained the power of fire and etched a triangle sign on his forehead. He was seen to be able to control fire and cause blasts. He was eventually chased down by Sarah Pazzini wielding the Witchblade. Pyromancer made his last appearance in the 49th issue of Witchblade in which he died. Tiamat Tiamat is an ancient goddess who appeared in the 146th issue of Witchblade for the eponymous story arc. She is the Sumerian goddess of chaos and creation, and the mother of the Sumerian gods, much like the Greek goddess Gaia. The wielders of the Witchblade and the power of the Angelus had trapped Tiamat in a crown in ancient Egypt. The crown was then passed down through many hands over the ages until the current one when a cat burglar stole the crown in New York City. The cat burglar put the stolen crown on her head, and then Tiamat took over the burglar's body with her power. Tiamat then proceeded to fulfill her vow of taking vengeance against those who had trapped her in the crown. Tiamat sought Sarah Pazzini, who currently wielded the Witchblade, to settle her revenge. Sarah valiantly fought against Tiamat, but the mythic powers of the goddess were too powerful. The epic battle between them continued despite this difference in the power dynamic, and it reached its culmination in the 149th issue in which Tiamat was defeated. Gerard Irons When Kenneth Irons drank from the Holy Grail to become immortal, his son Gerard Irons was also present there and did the same. Like his father, Gerard Irons was also a Knight of the Templars and is skilled in all forms of combat. He possesses magical skills as well. When Kenneth Irons died, his obsession for the Witchblade continued on in his son Gerard. Gerard's ambition was further powered by his will to seek revenge. To attain these goals, Gerard became negligent to everyone who stood between him and his goals. The Witchblade had also split into two, and a part of it was possessed by Danielle Baptiste, so Gerard went on to date Danielle. He became an integral part of Danielle's life and hid his true identity and intentions by pretending to be a collector of sorts. He wanted revenge against Sarah, who had killed his father, and eventually engaged in a fight with her. Danielle was also dragged into this fight, and she fought with Sarah against Gerard. In this fight, Gerard Irons fell off of a church, but he survived the fall while sustaining some serious wounds, and he was lastly arrested by Sarah. Elisa Spencer Elisa Spencer, also known as the Dark Scion, has appeared in a total of eight issues of the Witchblade comic as the antagonist, and her first appearance was in the 159th issue. She is a mysterious woman who is on the lookout for various methods and opportunities to manipulate the Witchblade wielder Sarah Pazzini and a local politician. Elisa Spencer's purpose is to destroy all the messiahs as well as corrupt and destroy all that is good. Thus, Elisa Spencer is the exact opposite of the heroine called the Magdalena, who is the protector of the Catholic Church and gives people the choice to redeem their sins. Tarsim Vox the Weave is a primordial being that came into existence when the Darkness Power and the Witchblade were united for a brief time because of Ian Nottingham. The Weave can empower others with its power and chose Tarsum Vox as its host. Tarsum Vox is a time traveler who was charged with the death penalty for a heinous crime in his time period. Tarsum Vox had killed the then wielder of the Witchblade, whom the society worshipped. In order to save himself from the death penalty, he escaped back in time to evade the punishment. But Tarsum was not able to maintain control when he leapt back in time, and he ended up traveling tens of thousands of years back. He then put himself in a state of hibernation, which did not age him, but allowed him to dream. A new entity formed in this period and bonded itself with Tarsum, giving him incredible powers. More entities of energy emerged and guarded his location, making the place more or less a prison for him. When the archaeologist Lara Croft found him, Tarsum gave some of his powers to her to destroy the guards and free him from this cage. The Weave sent Lara to find the Witchblade in order to destroy the guard and free Tarsum with its power. Lara managed to bring Sarah Pazzini, the current Witchblade wielder, to free Tarsum, but five more people from Tarsum's time were brought back to this time during these events. With these people, Tarsum Vox aimed to build a bridge between the current Witchblade and the Witchblade in the past so that he could freely travel between the two timelines, but his plans were foiled by the efforts of Sarah Pazzini. Nora 
The head of the National Scientific Welfare Foundation, or NSWF, is Tatsuoki Furumizu. His genes were used to create genetically predisposed humans called neogenes. Nora is also a neogene created to wield the clone blades. She belongs to the first generation of the neogenes and serves as the personal assistant of Tatsuoki Furumizu. Nora has appeared in this role throughout the Witchblade anime series. Tatsuoki Furumizu sent Nora to kidnap Masane Amaha, who wielded the Witchblade. A battle ensued between these characters, and Nora ended up impaling Masane with her hair. Nora then took Masane Amaha to the NSWF medical facility, where Dr. Rie Nishida experimented on her. Masane was later rescued by her friend Tazawa. In later events, Dr. Rie Nishida sent Nora to stalk the dog owned by the captain, a friend of Masane, to find out the location of Masane. During these events, Nora had to battle with a character named Reina Soho, who eventually impaled Nora and caused her demise. Brunhildas The Brunhildas is a biker gang of witches from Chicago who made their first appearance in the 153rd issue of Witchblade in the third part of the Unbalanced Pieces story arc. This coven of witches was led by a member named Morgan, and they stood in the way of Sarah Pizzini from rescuing her acquaintance named Kane Jorgensen, who is a wizard working as a stage magician. This coven of biker witches also had a member named Esmeralda, who will be discussed soon in this video. Amaryllis Amaryllis made her first appearance in the 182nd issue of Witchblade in part one of the Power Broker story arc. She is a collector of ancient artifacts and has made about three appearances in the story. Bruce Wilder Bruce Wilder likes to put people in a bloody battle for the sake of his own amusement. He appeared in the Witchblade comic series for the first time in the 10th issue and has made appearances in about 19 issues. Bruce Wilder is the son of Danette Boucher, a model associated with Kenneth Irons, and she is also on our list of villains for this video. After Danette died, her son Bruce was left behind to seek revenge. Bruce Wilder has appeared in the Darkness comic alongside Sarah. He met Sarah Pizzini when she was waiting for the police to arrive near a burning tanker. Bruce drove by to talk, and then the two went to the apartment of the late Kenneth Irons, where Bruce informed Sarah about a gang war and the plans of Joe Surrey. Bruce Wilder was a well-mannered, sophisticated, and confident man who wanted to acquire more power. His journeys in the Witchblade comics ended when he died in the 19th issue in the Family Ties story arc. Calliope Calliope made her first appearance in the 16th issue of the Witchblade comic, in which Sarah Pizzini was drugged and taken to a government weapons laboratory. Calliope was seen taking control of the minds of the other subjects and orchestrating an escape from the Level 52 facility located in Rio de Janeiro. Apparition Apparition is also known as Sugar Skull, but her real name is Evangelina Castro. She is a United States citizen and works as an esoteric archaeologist for Mall Analytics. She is in possession of a magical human skin that has merged into her body. The skin is covered in various tattoos, and each tattoo is able to perform different functions depending upon those words and images that the tattoo constitutes. Her Never Forget tattoo was seen to erase the memory of the target, but the full potential of her tattoos remains unknown. Her skin is able to bend light and make her invisible, while she herself is skilled in military disciplines like hand-to-hand -hand combat and the use of firearms. Evangelina moved to the United States when she was a teenager, and her father sent her to a military academy where she became excellent for black op excursions. On one such mission, Evangelina was injured in a bomb attack that damaged her skin, and she was hospitalized. In the hospital, Mall Analytics Corporation offered her to become a part of an experiment and sign a contract of 25 years to end her suffering. Evangelina accepted the job and became the host of this cursed skin belonging to a vengeful Roman slave woman. Imbibed with dark magic in her body, Evangelina took the apparition identity and began working as a field agent for the Mall Corporation. Danette Boucher Danette Boucher is the mother of Bruce Wilder, whom we have discussed earlier. She is a model who was the lover of Kenneth Irons in the 1950s. We have already seen Kenneth experiment with Ian because of his Witchblade obsession, and he had done the same with Danette also. 
Kenneth carved magic runes on Danette's hand for her to wield the Witchblade. But these runes were a failure, and the Witchblade rejected Danielle to be her host. But a small residue of the Witchblade was left behind in Danette's body, and she had to regularly release the energy built inside her body. In order to release the energy built up in her body, Danette began to release it into young girls, which ended up cooking their insides and killing them. Owing to this unique killing style, Danette Boucher earned the name the Microwave Murderer. Sarah Pizzini later retrieved the residue of the Witchblade with the power of her own Witchblade, and the ordeal killed Danette Boucher. Her son Bruce was then left behind to seek revenge. Agaris Agaris is a Judeo-Christianic demon who has only appeared once in the Witchblade Due Process comic. According to the writer Phil, he borrowed this demon from mythology to force his characters to make the decisions that they took in the story. This is why Agaris has no tangible powers as an antagonist, but he plays by a set of unseen rules in his pursuit of innocent souls. The strategy that Agaris follows for this is to play on the insecurities of his victims, and his goal is to collect the souls of the innocent. He cannot physically influence his targets, so he taints their soul with his touch and imparts benevolent powers with malevolent intentions. For instance, he gave the ability to inflict pain to his target, William, without leaving a trace. This manipulation allowed William to remain pure but pushed him into a downward spiral. In the words of the writer Phil, Agaris is that little voice in the back of your head telling you to believe in what he says rather than what you know to be true. Bastet. Bastet is an African cat goddess related to the ancient Egyptian religions. She was the goddess of warfare. In the Top Cow universe, Bastet was in love with a moral Egyptian prince named Sala. But the prince was betrothed to Raquel, who disapproved of her future husband mingling with the goddess, so she sought out the Witchblade to fight Bastet. With the help of Anubis, Raquel found the Witchblade and then fought with Bastet. Bastet won this fight, but Prince Sala became skeptical of her love. Bastet then turned Prince Sala into an immortal to prove her love. Raquel once again devised a scheme to defeat Bastet, and this time she sealed Bastet in a magical cat statue in which she remained for thousands of years, while Prince Sala also lived on. In the 20th century, Prince Sala was still walking on the earth, and all these years he had been searching for ways to release Bastet. With the help of Lara Croft, he got his hands on the cat statue, but he got trapped in his own traps. Lara went on to show the artifact to the world, and an old lady named Genevieve stole it to gain magical powers. In doing so, she freed Bastet from the statue. Bastet killed the old lady, but Sarah Pizzini managed to trap her in the statue once again. Prince Sala later appeared again and stole the cat statue from Sarah. Prince Sala performed a ritual and freed Bastet, who then sought revenge against the Witchblade. Another battle ensued in which Prince Sala got injured and lost his immortality. Bastet sacrificed her immortality to save Prince Sala, and then left the fight in fear of losing Prince Sala again. Burana Burana is the son of Vana, the leader of the Arctic Blue with the power of controlling ice. Vana wanted to revenge her other son, named Taurus, who was killed by Cannon Hawk, an elite commander. She wanted to use Cannon Hawk's body to resurrect her son Taurus, but she sent out her son Burana to kidnap Cannon Hawk when he was spending the night with Lara Croft. Alongside Cannon Hawk, they had also abducted Sarah Pizzini, who wielded the Witchblade and managed to escape the capture. She then helped Lara save Cannon and engaged in a fight with Burana, but Burana suffered defeat and Cannon was freed from their capture. Burana appears in the Fathom comic series and first appeared in the 12th issue. He has appeared in a total of 8 issues until now. Butcher Knight A man named Luther Washington, who went by the name of Lancelot centuries ago, was an ultimate warrior knight. Years ago, Lancelot was caged in the statue of a fearsome gargoyle named Butcher Knight, a monster created to destroy demons. He remained trapped there for 7,000 years. They both were freed when a half-demon witch named Daria broke them free. Lancelot then went out to get revenge on the one who had trapped him in the statue. 
Lancelot was attacked by the darkness, so he approached Merlin, the spawn of Satan, who then bound him with Butcher Knight. Lancelot went on to fight Queen Zara, who currently wielded the Witchblade, and he even managed to kill her. But then Merlin turned him into a stone statue to look over the building. Years later, Daria transformed her back into a human and promised revenge against Merlin. Lancelot then took the name of Luther Washington. They attacked Merlin in an art show, and Lancelot eventually defeated him. Lancelot then ate Merlin's heart and freed himself from the gargoyle. Clone Blade The NSWF once had the Witchblade in their possession, and they researched it to create a man-made biological copy of it, which was then named Clone Blade. They also created the Neogenes to wield the Clone Blade, and the Neogenes of the same generation were called the Clone Blade Sisters. The wielder of the clone blade had to wear a silver bracelet with a blue jewel on their left wrist, and the armor differed for each wielder. In the first generation of Neogenes, Reina Soho, Shiori Suzuki, and Nora wielded the clone blade. After further research, a much stronger version called the Dual Clone Blade was made, which allowed two clone blades to be wielded by a single person, and the wielder had to wear silver bracelets with purple jewels on their wrists. Dual Clone Blade was wielded by the second generation of Neogenes, which included Maria, Aoi, and Asagi. Call. Call belongs to the Necrobus clan, an ancient nocturnal race. He walked on the earth for many years with his clan members and hunted down humans to survive on their energies. The Darkness, the Witchblade, and the Angelus waged a war against his clan and defeated them, after which Call hid underground with his clan members. In the modern era, he took the civilian identity named Walter Kalowski, and he was locked in an asylum. He eventually broke out from there when a federal agent named Carla Denton offered herself to be his slave in exchange for killing Jackie Estacado. With their joint efforts, they abducted Jackie Estacado and imprisoned her. Sarah Pizzini was also involved in these events. Carla was about to kill Jackie, but Jackie turned the tables in her favor and captured Carla instead. Meanwhile, Cull absorbed human souls from Sarah and revealed that the Witchblade and the Darkness would die, and then the Necrobi clan would resurface and enslave the humans. Cull knocked Sarah down, but Jackie returned back to the scene and helped Sarah regain her control over her powers. Together, they managed to kill Cull with the additional help of Carla. Daria Born with the union of a human and a demon, Daria is a witch who wields the Sword of Lucifer that was passed to her by her master, Gideon the Dragon Slayer, along with the Key of Solomon. She then killed her master and used the sword and the key to summon her demon father, Bodice from Hell. She asked her father to revive her mother, to which Bodus replied that they needed the blood of Merlin for this, and Merlin's blood could only be drawn by the gargoyle Butcher Knight. She then stole the darkness power from Jackie and went to Paris, but Jackie, Sarah Pizzini, and Lara Croft also reached there. She released the Butcher Knight from his statue in Notre Dame and then escaped after a short battle with Sarah Pizzini. She then attacked Merlin with Butcher Knight, who killed him, and then Lancelot freed himself from the Butcher Knight. Daria then convinced Lancelot to serve her in exchange for helping him find his love, Guinevere. Esmeralda Esmeralda is a part of the biker gang of witches called the Brunhildas, and she is one of the members who are able to use magic. She first appeared in the 152nd issue of Witchblade, which is set in Chicago where Sarah Pizzini works as a private detective. Esmeralda becomes an important character when Sarah Pizzini was investigating supernatural killers in Chicago and got involved with the Brunhildas. Esmeralda made her last appearance in the 159th issue of the comic in which she died. Gloriana Silver Gloriana was orphaned when she was seven years old and later adopted by a man named Wolfgar Olafsson, who mentored her and trained her in academics and martial arts. She was told that it is her destiny to bear the Ember Stone, and all this training is preparing her for the same. She found the Ember Stone in 2008 and placed it on her neck, after which she was drawn to New York where the Trinity powers of the Witchblade, the Darkness, and Angelus were located. She transformed into a dragon when the Ember Stone was activated, and her sole purpose became to retrieve the other 12 artifacts and unite them. She became the general of the Aphrodite Cyborg's army and kept working for the curator to bring the end of the world. Jackie Estacado The darkness is passed on from father to son and is currently wielded by Jackie Estacado. 
The darkness allows its wielder to create anything that they imagine as long as there is no light. Besides blades, the wielder can also create living and sentient beings and control them too. Among all the wielders of the darkness, Jackie Estacado is the most powerful. He manifested the power for the first time on his 21st birthday, and later became the leader of a cult named Brotherhood of the Darkness, and became aware of the Witchblade and the Angelus. Jackie was supposed to die when he would pass on the darkness to his offspring, but because of a loophole, he survived and also had a baby with Sarah. Lacrima Lacrima is the demoness of despair who first appeared in the 78th issue of the Witchblade comic. She is responsible for killing Tom Judge, a priest who is the host of the Rapture Power. She stole the Rapture artifact from Tom Judge and then walked in the streets of New York, stealing people's hopes. She also targeted Sarah Pizzini, but she noticed the presence of Bruno Karloff, known as the Great Beast, so she left the fight and escaped with the Rapture. Jake McCarthy Jake McCarthy was the partner of Sarah Pizzini and had witnessed her many fights with different enemies. He once got injured in a battle between Sarah and Ian Nottingham and was hospitalized, but Sarah used her Witchblade to heal Jake. He also once picked up the Coin of Solomon during one of Sarah's investigations, but Sarah again used the Witchblade and pulled it out of his hands. During later events, Jake was in a coma, but when he woke up, a demon's spirit also awakened and took Jake as its vessel. Sarah fought the demon in Jake's body and weakened it, allowing Jake to regain his consciousness. But Jake immediately killed himself to prevent the demon from going berserk again. Marvelous Verdict Witchblade is an interesting comic series playing on the general dual theme of good versus evil, manifested in the form of the Darkness and the Angelus, while their offspring, the Witchblade, plays the role of maintaining balance. There have been a lot of interesting villains in the series, both major and minor. Comment below and let us know which villain is your favorite in this list and whom you consider the strongest. The Witchblade, exactly what it is and why I was chosen to wield it are still a mystery to me.